in any live or studio environment, the microphone is often the last link in the chain between your treasured, curated guitar tone and the listeners you want to impress. And it's a fundamental link, and without choosing your mic properly, it can render all those hours and pennies that you've spent completely pointless. Now, choosing a cab mic can be quite hard, because you can't exactly lug your amp all the way down to a pro audio shop and set up loads of different mics against it to decide which is best for your sound. So let's do that for you. Today we are going to be looking at seven Shure microphones that have been chosen specifically for their cab miking capabilities. We'll discuss their differences both in the quality of them as well as the technology that's inside of them and we'll go through what the purpose of each one is and then later on we're going to put each one in the exact same environment, the exact same position on the exact same cab with the same settings and even with the same reamped guitar playing. Sure, have been kind enough to hook us up with a plethora of different cab mics from different ranges all the way down to budget and beginner range right up to the very best that they have to offer. Dynamic mics, condenser mics, we've got it all. So why Sure? I mean there's a lot of different brands out there that do the job very well but in terms of live and studio microphones, Shure are pretty much the industry standard. And some of their models that we're even gonna be featuring today have become the staple of both live and studio mic setups. They're a very good benchmark when it comes to different mics of different types, and there is pretty much a Shure mic out there for everyone. So first, before we start doing testing and A-B comparisons, etc., let's just have a little run through of the mics that we're gonna be testing, talk about the features of each one and what application you might use each one for. Now, fundamentally, we have four different ranges of quality when it comes to Shure. So you have the PGA range, the SM range, the beta range or beta range, and the KSM range. Now they ascend in that order according to price range and the quality of materials used. However, you will find beginners and professionals using different mics from all of these ranges. Some of the SM range are still the most popular option when it comes to live and studio mics. Even when they've got an SM or even KSM equivalent, it's all down to personal preference. With that said, here are the seven that we're gonna be focusing on in particular. We have the PGA57, the PGA181, we have a SM27, an SM7B, we have a Beta 57A, we also have the Beta 181 with both the cardioid and the bi-directional microphone, and we also have the KSM313, which is pretty much the creme de la creme when it comes to instrument miking. So let's start with the PGA mics on our list. Now these ones have been chosen specifically because of what is known as their secret gem status. Now what do I mean by secret gem? We'll put it this way, for the money that you pay for these microphones, you're gonna be very surprised by how good they sound. So the PGA57 is essentially a more affordable, stripped back version of Shure's classic SM57. It's a dynamic mic, so it makes it great for close miking against a loud sound source, i.e. a guitar cab. And it's got a cardioid polar pattern, which if you're not aware, a polar pattern is the area around the mic from which sound is collected. And a cardioid polar pattern looks like this. So that makes it great for kind of focused close miking like an SM57 does very well. It's gonna have a bright, focused sound, like I mentioned earlier, and it works well either on its own or in conjunction with another mic, like a condenser microphone. I mean, the 57 on a cab is pretty much ingrained into the sonic culture of today's music. It's that standard.
The PGA 181 is an entirely different kind of mic to the PGA 57. It's known as a condenser mic, which are known for their very high output and their incredible articulation and detail. As great as they are, they do, however, need additional power to run, which comes by the way of phantom power. So before you pick one of these, make sure you're plugging it into either an interface or a mixing desk, which allows for phantom power, which is normally a switch on there that's labeled plus 48V. This button sends the extra voltage up through your microphone cable into the condenser mic and that allows for that extra detail, that extra high output and sensitivity. So this mic is going to be more consistent across a wider frequency band. However, it's worth being careful with this because it is extra sensitive, it's very easy to get a lot of bleed into your sound with your near other instruments or maybe drunk people a couple of meters away. So I think it's definitely better suited to the studio than live, uh, unless you're playing somewhere that's a bit quieter or you've got a little bit extra space. Just be careful with it, that's all I'm saying. Now we're also going to be looking at the beta versions of these two PGA microphones, but principally they're here in this video to demonstrate to you that you don't necessarily have to spend beta money to get really good quality sound. These PGA mics work perfectly fine, they give you good quality sound, and if that's all that your budget allows for, you're not necessarily having to sacrifice too much in terms of the sound quality. Right, with all that said, let's look at the SM mics that we're going to be testing. Now obviously the SM57, which is this thing here, is pretty much the instrument mic that you hear on pretty much every record, every gig you've been to, most likely has one of these somewhere. So to that end, you know what you're gonna get with it. So that's why we've decided to show you the PGA version and the beta version of this instead, but obviously it's worth noting that this is also a very strong contender. The PGA version that we've discussed already and the beta version that I'm gonna be discussing in a moment are very close equivalents to this microphone that offer you different options in terms of quality and price range and a little bit of difference in the sound as well. So the SM mics that we are gonna be looking at in this video are the SM27 and the SM7B. So the SM27, like the 181 that we've already discussed, is also a condenser microphone, but it's got a much larger diaphragm, so that's gonna give you a wider frequency response. And as well as that, it's got a nice tight cardioid polar pattern, which allows for a greater focus on the actual sound source that you're recording. It's a great all-rounder, and it's actually a mic that we've been using in this room for ages. So, I mean, we like it. Moving on to the SMB, it's known nowadays as the quintessential microphone for podcasting and streaming. However, it's pretty handy when you put it on a guitar cap as well. They're very direct, very focused, and they pick up a lot of the warmth and body of your guitar cab or amp that perhaps some of the others don't. So it makes it a great option on its own if you're looking for something darker sounding, or if you wanna complement it alongside something brighter. Essentially, the capsule inside this mic, as well as the 57 and the SM58 vocal mic that you're probably already familiar with, are all exactly the same. It's the same Unidyne 3 capsule, but what makes all three of these microphones 
sound so different is the actual acoustic environment that surrounds the capsule. The SM7B is a dynamic microphone, so it doesn't need any phantom power per se. However, it is going to need a lot of gain. Shaw themselves recommend using this with a device that gives you a clean gain boost, something like a cloud lifter, a Fethead, or an SEDM1, the links for which I'll put down in the description. However, if your device has got around 120 dB plus of dynamic range on the preamp, then you should just be fine turning it up and you won't get too much noise. Something like a Focusrite Claret or indeed the Universal Audio Apollo X4 that we're going to use will be absolutely fine. All you need to do is just turn the gain up. Next up is the beta range microphones that we're going to be testing today, starting with the Beta 181C. Now this is the original version of the 181 of which the PGA 181 is a more affordable offshoot. It's a condenser microphone that consists of a fundamental preamp tube as well as a load of different capsules that you can interchange on top which alter the polar pattern of the microphone. You have supercardioid, cardioid, bi-directional and omnidirectional which offer you a load of versatility when it comes to your mic. Today we're just going to focus on the cardioid capsule and the bi-directional capsule mainly because cardioid is pretty much all you're going to need when it comes to close cab miking but the bi-directional capsule is a good option when it comes to picking up a bit more of the natural reverberation of a room if you're in a studio and could be a nice option as well. <laughs> Beta 57A is a louder output, bit brighter, bit nicer version of the SM57 and indeed the PGA. This mic and indeed all the other mics in the Beta range were born from the use of neodymium magnets inside the microphone, which apart from being a chemical element that's great to know for a pub quiz, basically helps offer a lot more detail to the sound. The polar pattern of this microphone is super cardioid, which makes it even more focused than a cardioid mic, which makes it great if your amp has got a particular sweet spot in the speaker cone that you want to focus in on, or just to avoid bleed from other areas as well. It's got a louder output too, and it's great in particular for shimmery clean amps, something like a classic Fender amp of the 60s, or just anyone who wants a little bit more top end on their guitar sound. <laughs> Thank you. 
lastly, we have an absolute treasure of a microphone. It's the KSM313, and it's one of the best mics that Shaw offer. It's known as a ribbon mic, which is a technology based around a strip of metal being suspended in a magnetic field, rather than the diaphragm that most of the other mics employ. They're passive like a dynamic microphone, so there's no need again for phantom power. However, they're a lot more sensitive and a lot more detailed than your average dynamic microphone. Normally they're very delicate and very precious and you have to be very careful with them, particularly around louder sound sources, but not this one. This one's way more rugged. It was built to be used on the road. That's partly in thanks to the type of ribbon that's inside the microphone. It's known as Roswellite ribbon. So apart from being really sturdy, it was named that because it has an otherworldly sound and they named it after the UFOs because of this. I'm not making that up, but I'm a little bit suspicious that the Shaw rep who told me that is. <laughs> anyway, it's an incredible, versatile tool to have in your arsenal. It's great for horns, it's great for vocals, drums, guitars. It gives you everything you want and none of what you don't want. Slash of Guns N' Roses fame is one of the first notable users of this microphone and there's pictures of him using this live, having about six of them on there. And I've also seen pictures of John Petrucci using it as well. It's bi-directional, so it's not going to be as focused as some of the other mics on this list. However, it produces a lovely wide sound with a load of mid-range transients, which is absolutely perfect for guitars. There's actually a nice little trick that you can do with this microphone, which is if you turn it around so that the logo is facing away from the cab, and then you reverse the phase on your computer for complicated sciencey sound reasons, then you can actually get a much brighter sound with a bit more presence. We've demonstrated this as well in the shootout, so you can kind of hear the difference between that and the normal way round. But with that said, Let's get into the shootout. So in the interest of minimizing the variables in this test, we're gonna be putting every single mic on the exact same spot of the cab. As well as that, we're gonna be using the exact same clean and driven settings. And to make it even more of a strict test, we're also gonna be reamping the exact same guitar playing through the amp with those settings so that you can really get a sense of comparison between all the different sounds. We decided to use an Orange Rocker Verb 50 head as well as a PPC 4x12 cab for the purposes of this video, mainly because they sound great both clean and driven. And we're also gonna be plugging all of the mics into our trusty Universal Audio Apollo X4. We're gonna be playing the guitar with a Fender Custom Shop Rory Gallagher Strat as well as an Ibanez AZ Premium so that you get a bit of a variety of different tones.
Now, more often than not, you're probably just going to be using the one microphone. However, there are definitely benefits to pairing two mics up together on your cab. Some of the condenser mics we've discussed, and indeed the KSM ribbon mic, would absolutely benefit from being paired with something like the Beta 57, so that you get a bit of a best of both worlds sound and you cover a lot of the bases in your tone. So we thought we'd do a little demonstration of that as well, so you can kind of hear those differences too. So there you have it. It's going to be one of those really. A lot of people will prefer one over the other. There's going to be people who are just as happy with the sound of a PGA 57 as they are going to be with a KSM 313. Like I said earlier, it's, it's not about the price. There's plenty of high-end studios and high-end venues out there perfectly happy with sticking an SM57 on their cab and getting the exact sound that they want. So the choice is also going to depend massively on your particular situation. I mean, if you're going on a toilet tour in your mate's brother's van, you're probably not going to be looking at a delicate high-end ribbon mic to be getting the best out of your sound. You probably want to chuck something like a PGA 57 in a box full of mics and leads and just get on with it. However, sometimes you do want to have a little play around with your sound, whereas if you're in a studio and not a loud venue with loads of drunks and alcohol spilling everywhere, you can afford to maybe be a little bit more picky with the detail of your actual guitar amp sound. And with that, I think you're going to really love the sounds that you can get out of the KSM 313 or one of the more delicate condenser mics as opposed to just a 57. I mean, it's horses for courses. But I hope that gives you a little bit of insight into the Shure Cab mic range, and I hope that the experiment was useful for you and that you learned a thing or two along the way. Thanks to Tom for being helpful as always and giving me a hand with all the microphones and the positioning as well as the recording. And a massive thanks to Shure as well for providing these mics and giving us the ability to do this test. And thanks as always to you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave us a like, subscribe to see more content like this, and we will see you very soon.